What is up YouTube and welcome to another video. Infrastructure as code has always been a very important part of DevOps. It allows us to describe our infrastructure as code in a code base and keep it in source control systems like Git as a source of truth. Once we have our infrastructure described as source code, we then use automation tools to take that code and produce the actual infrastructure. Today, we're going to be looking at a very exciting, awesome piece of software that makes this possible in the Kubernetes space, and it's called Flux. So without further ado, let's go. What makes Flux different to every other deployment tool in Kubernetes? Ever since Kubernetes became a thing, engineers have been caught up with delivery pipelines of applications building the code, packaging the code, testing, deployment, integration testing, and then release. But we forget, what about our base infrastructure? What about the things like the ingress controller? What about log collectors? What about monitoring services? What about your service meshes? What about all the systems that you use to run on top of Kubernetes? When people talk about Kubernetes, they mostly talk about the pipelines and the CI CD system of applications that developers build and ship to Kubernetes. They forget about the fundamental things when they create a cluster they have to set up all these fundamental services that make up part of the operational cluster in production if you ask most engineers how they create a cluster in production most of the engineers don't have a source of truth of how they create their clusters and not many people can create and reliably recreate clusters in production that match so this is where flux comes in once you have a kubernetes cluster you can synchronize that cluster state with source control like git and that allows us to keep our our Kubernetes cluster up to date with the source of truth that we have stored in Git. So for those of you who are new to my channel, everything I do is documented on the Docker development YouTube series. If you go through to the Flux folder, you'll see a readme. So every step is here, meaning you can precisely follow along. So check the link down below to the source code so you can follow along. So the first step we're going to do is we need a Kubernetes cluster. So what I've done, I'm running Docker for Windows here. I just go over to Kubernetes and I enable that. If you're new to Kubernetes, check out my Kubernetes development guide, which is linked below. In that guide, we take a look at how to install Kubernetes on Docker for Windows and Mac and how to configure kubectl so you can start using the cluster. If you already have a Kubernetes cluster running somewhere in the cloud or on your local machine, if you're using Minikube or Kind, you can go ahead and follow along with the next step. So the next step is we're going to need to install Flux CTL. That's the command line utility for interacting with our Flux server. We also use it to, ins to install Flux on Kubernetes. So what we're going to need to do is go over to the GitHub releases page. So if you click this link, this will take you to Flux uh, 1.18. This is the version that I use in this demo. If you scroll down, you, what you're going to want to do is grab the binary. Once you've downloaded that file, you want to copy it into any folder on your machine and rename it to fluxctl.exe. And then what you're going to want to do is head over to control panel, system and security system, go to advanced system settings. Then you'll see the system properties. You want to go ahead and select environment variables and then select your path environment variable in this list. Double click that and make sure that the folder that you copied um, this Flux ETL in is actually available on your path. So you can see I have that folder right there. And then what you do is just click and open up any terminal. So PowerShell terminal will do. And then you want to say Flux CTL and you should see all the help text come up. That means Flux CTL is installed correctly. So before we start, we want to make sure that we're pointing to the right Kubernetes cluster. So to do that, I'm going to say kubectl config current context. And you can see I'm pointing to Docker desktop. So Docker for desktop Windows Kubernetes cluster. And then I say kubectl get nodes. You want to make sure you at least have a Kubernetes node up and running, ready to go. So if you head over to docs.fluxcd.io, you'll see the getting started guide for Flux. So they have quite good documentation on how to get started and get set up. And they also have a tutorial and guide section with quite a lot of um, in-depth tutorials and taking you through the different steps and features of Flux that I'm going to show you today. So what we're going to do is the first thing is we're going to create a namespace. So I'm going to say kubectl create ns flux. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to hold all our resources together in a single name space the next step that we want to do is go ahead and install flux into that namespace so to do that we're going to use flux ctl install command and what we need to do is we need to hook up flux 
to the Git repo that we want Flux to control. Basically, what we're going to do is install Flux and hook it up to this GitHub repo, and we're going to synchronize the cluster state with that repo. So what we want to do is create a Git user that we're going to use. So in this case, I'm just going to create an environment variable to hold my user account name. And then what we're going to do is say Flux ETL install, and we're going to point it to that Git user. We're also going to point it to that Git user's email address for github.com. And then we're going to set up which Git repo to use. So I'm going to say Git github.com and the github user and we're going to point it to the docker development youtube series that is this github repo that we are in at the moment and then what we're going to do is we say git path and this is the file structure the folder structure that you want flux to manage so in this example you can see i have my docker development guide i have a kubernetes folder and in here i have a deployment folder for a deployment file so i have deployment.yaml in here i also have configmap.yaml and i have secret.yaml so i've got three kubernetes manifests that i want to synchronize with my cluster so what we do is we say git path and we pass in the comma delimited paths that we want uh, flux to synchronize with so i say kubernetes config maps kubernetes secrets and kubernetes deployments this is really good because this helps you keep all your cluster definitions in git so if you have prometheus you have an ingress controller maybe you have an um, elastic search or log stash you have grafana you have all these things that make up uh, fundamental services of your kubernetes cluster that you want to keep in git and you want to keep it synchronized so you'll basically create a github repo and you'll put all those folders and files inside a git repo structure it any way you want and you set up the pathing in here that you want flux to synchronize with so flux also has the ability to recursively go through these um, directory structures so you can set up any directory structure that you like flux will go through and find all the yaml files and trawl through all of them and basically say kubectl apply and it monitors is the git repo for any kind of changes that occur so then we also say what branch we want uh, flux to look at and this is really neat because we can say this can be a feature branch but ideally you want to point this to your master branch and then what you can also then do is every time you want to make change let's say you want to make changes to your grafana or your prometheus or your ingress controller you can make a fork or make a branch of that as a feature branch then you can apply the changes in that branch and use something like kind or mini cube or test cluster to synchronize flux in that cluster to that repo so you can test out your changes before you merge it to your master branch and then once you merge it into your master branch your main production cluster will then take those changes and apply them so that's the main benefit of using flux and that's something that other cd tools don't really offer you so then the other thing we can specify here is a namespace so we can say what namespace is flux um, should flux go into so i've just created a namespace called flux and we're going to point to that and we just kubectl apply the output of that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and copy that and i'm going to paste it in the terminal that's going to go ahead and install flux into that namespace so now every command we run when we run flux ctl will be run against a specific namespace now since we've put flux into the flux namespace we have to set up a default namespace for flux ctl to use so to do that i create an environment variable called flux forward namespace and i point it to flux namespace so now what that means is every time we run flux ctl it will use that namespace to talk to flux so we can say flux list workloads and we can see that we have no workloads synchronized at the moment the other thing we can do is we can say kubectl in the flux namespace um, and we can pass in the the name of the pod we can say logs so we can get the logs of this pod and we can see what it's doing so here you can see it's all started up ready to go and basically what it'll try and do is it's going to try and synchronize you can see here it's trying to synchronize using ssh to my docker development guide um, youtube series repo that we have here now the first thing is we need to set up security credentials and authentication for flux to be able to talk to that git repo now to get flux to actually talk to this git repo we have to go over to our repository we have to go to settings and then what we need to do is go to deployment keys and you'll see i have a flux key here so what i'll go ahead and do is delete this one and i'll show you how to create a new one so what you want to do is say add deployment key now 
we going to need a deployment key um, from Flux. So to, the way to do that is to go to Flux and ask it for the deployment key. So the way to do that is we say Flux CTL identity. And if we run that command, Flux will pass us an SSH key that we can use as a deployment credential. So what we do is we can go ahead and copy this guy and then we can come over to the Docker development YouTube series to this page and we can create a new key. I'm just going to call it Flux and I'm going to paste it in here and we need to give it right access and then you're going to say add key. So basically what happens now is the Flux server will ping our um, Git repo and at specific intervals that we can configure. I think the default interval is every five minutes. So Flux server will go every five minutes to our Git repo and check if there is any changes and we'll synchronize it with our Kubernetes cluster. So if you want to manually create that sync, you can run the Flux CTL sync command and then it will sync at the time you run that command. If we do kubectl get pods, you can see that we all of a sudden we have new pods running. You can see they're only 55 seconds old. So Flux has gone and synchronized our deployment YAML file that we indicated um, to this cluster. If I do kubectl get deploy, you can see our deployment is here. So this is this deployment YAML file. We have an example deploy defined in here. Flux went to our Git repo and pulled that YAML file down and applied it. We can also say kubectl get secrets and we can see it also applied our secret file, which is this YAML over here. We can also say kubectl get config map. We can see our example config that's defined over here has also been deployed to Kubernetes automatically. So now Flux is sitting there and it's keeping an eye on our GitHub repo and making sure that our cluster is always up to date. So the other thing I wanted to show you now that Flux has synchronized with our Git repo, if you say Flux CTL list workloads, you can see Flux is now keeping an eye on this deployment that it's created. And you can also see it has image, uh, Python 1.0.3 and if we go into our deployment YAML file you'll also see here that we have image Python 1.0.3 so it deployed exactly what was in GitHub to our Kubernetes cluster. So that is the most powerful part of Flux and the main feature is this automated Git cluster synchronization. Now the secondary feature, another feature I just wanted to show you briefly um, about Flux is automated deployment of new container images. So Flux also has the ability to monitor container registries and when images change, it can pull those, those containers down and update the deployment and also synchronize it back to Git. So you can see in our YAML file here, we said Python 1.0.3. And when I say Flux CTL list workloads, we have um, a workload here with Python 1.0.3. So it's synchronized to Git, but what if a developer wants to make a change and make version 1.0.4? Now, in order for Flux to monitor the container registry for that deployment, we can follow this tutorial about automations, locks, and annotations. And if we scroll down, we can see that we need this thing called a policy. So for every workload, you need to create a policy in order to tell Flux how it should drive changes to the container registry. So by default, the main feature of Flux is to synchronize with Git. But if you wanted to monitor the container registry as well, this feature is also an option. And to do that, you can go over to that YAML file and you can control it by creating a policy as an annotation. So you can see here I have fluxcd.io and I specifically um, provide a SEMV notation and I say automated equals true. So what happens here is this is a tag and this is the container name. So you can see in part of my pod spec here, I have one container called example app and it's Python version 1.0.3. Because I'm following a SEMV number, I can use the SEMV policy to control the deployment. So what Flux will do because I've said automated equals true flux will now look at the registry that this application is deployed to if you have a private registry and you have an image pool secret as part of your deployment spec flux will um, silently behind the scene use that image pool secret and it will pull your private git registry as well so if I make this change and I check it into git if I do flux ctl list workloads you can see now we have a policy say saying automated so now if we if we make a change to our docker image and we deploy and we push it to a docker registry flux will automatically roll it out so let's say i made a change to the docker image on my local machine so i i've made a new change 1.0.4 and i go ahead and push that to docker hub let's see what flux does if you want to set up the policy on your deployment using flux ctl instead of creating the annotation on the pod manually um, you can say flux ctl policy and you can point to the workload and say tag 
and then you can say the container that you want to update as well as the semver number that you want to use okay so let's take a look what happened so if i run flux etl list workloads we can now see that our automated policy has taken effect and it's rolled out 1.0.4 onto our pods if i say kubectl get pods we can see we have two new pods being rolled out so they've rolled out um, less than a minute ago if i say kubectl get deploy we can see we have example deploy and if we take a look at that deployment we can see that it's now running 1.0.4 so flux has automatically picked up that there's a new image in our docker registry it's gone ahead and pulled it and applied it to our yaml file but that's not all the other thing that it that it's done you can see if i go back to my git repo and I go to that branch that I told Flux to monitor, it's gone, it's gone ahead and created a commit um, automatically. And if I take a look at that commit, you can see that Flux has written back to our Git repository the new image that it's detected. So Flux keeps our Git repo up to date as well, as well as our cluster. So you can see Flux is a really great tool for DevOps that allows us to keep our cluster up to date and in sync with GitHub and allows us to use that Git repository as a source of truth. So let me know down in the comments below, how do you guys keep your Kubernetes clusters in sync? And how do you maintain source of truth for things like Prometheus, Grafana, your monitoring, your logging services, your ingress controller and other services that form the foundation of your Kubernetes cluster. I do believe that many engineers don't really have that capabilities to do that and I think Flux really um, does well in, in filling that gap. So hopefully this video helped you guys fill that gap. So let me know down in the comments what sort of other videos you'd like me to cover in the future. Hope this helped. Like and subscribe and until next time, peace.